importantly, is Cisco. Cisco have got their own um, LMI type. So this is a default. This is a default LMI type, and um, when you first boot up your frame relay connection, and the first one that we tried is uh, a Cisco. The next type of LMI is ANSI. So the ANSI LMI type is defined by a standard known as T1.617, it's commonly called AnnexD. Um, ANSI is the most common type of LMI um, found across frame relay networks. The last sort is Q. 933A. That's defined as ITU-TQ933 or simply Annex A. Now the only other thing I want to say about LMIs at the moment is that I said before they're only significant between the your router and the frame relay switch. So technically you could have LMI type Cisco down here and you could have LMI type ANSI up here. You will be told by the frame relay service provider which one to apply to your router and then obviously the only way to get the connection to work between the two is to, to have the correct um, LMI type configured on your router. Cisco routers will attempt all three so if Cisco doesn't work, it will attempt C and then Q933A. So it should work regardless. Um, there can be problems on a frame relay uh, network. and I, Once you get it working, there shouldn't really be any problems. But initially, when it's all been set up, sometimes I've seen problems where someone's hard-coded a certain LMI type for whatever reason, and of course it hasn't worked. Okay, I mentioned the term NNI earlier. Shouldn't really need to know about this, but I thought I'd add it for completeness. NNI stands for Network to Network Interface, and basically it's a standard that's used between two switches on the frame relay service provider. Um, so it's, it's used for these two devices to communicate. In, a, in ATM, it's referred to, to as Network Node Interface. Okay, next term to um, cover is your local access rate. Basically, your local access rate is the speed of the connection that you've paid for between your router and the frame relay service provider. Now, depending on, on where you are in the world, um, the speed, uh, this circuit can be 56k, 64k, and depending on the type of interface you've got, it can be up to T1 speeds. Usually, what you'll find is it goes up to 2 megabytes. Again, it just depends on the um, connection you have. If you have high speed serial interface, you could actually get it up to T3 speeds. Now the clever thing which you know you shouldn't really be expected to know um, for the CCNA certainly is that if you've only paid for a 56k connection for example when the circuit is uh, quiet and say you're sharing a connection between um, different vendors you can actually burst up if it detects um, little traffic passing you can burst up to the full amount of bandwidth that's actually available on that line even though you haven't paid for it and then you can scale it down again. I'm not going to cover committed burst and committed information rate. I think it's too much for the CCNA. Um, but I just wanted you to be aware of that possibility. Say you paid for a 56k connection here, but up here, say this is your headquarters router here. You may, because you're getting more traffic coming from two different sides, you could pay for a 128k connection. Probably less and less common nowadays because the amount of um, traffic that's going through, and we have voice data, a video, a video conferencing as well. Um, so 128k is obviously quite a, a low speed link to have. All right, so we've covered a few of the terms here. We've covered our local access rate, which is what we've paid for. 
We've covered NNI and LMI. I'm going to be going through all these again when we're actually configuring the routers, so don't worry if it hasn't quite clicked yet. Uh, next thing I'd like to talk about is Fecken and Becken bits. We go back to our network diagram and clean that up. Okay, so what can happen is when we're communicating between our routers, obviously there can be congestion on the line. So FEC and this even if it if it's asked at all you'll just be expected to know what they are um, I really don't expect you to be tested on anything more complicated on a very basic knowledge of FE, F, Fekin and Beckham bits um, so frame relay is typically implemented on a reliable network so you don't tend to have data integrity issues um, but it frame relay does have two congestion notification mechanisms so the first one is forward explicit congestion notification and it wouldn't take too much guessing to work out that the next type is backward explicit congestion notification basically Beckett and Fekin and Beckin bits are each controlled by a single bit contained in the um, frame relay header it also has what's known as a DE bit or a discard elig eligibility bit the only difference really is the direction that the traffic is been sent so if we just wipe off the arrow here okay so let's say this arrow is indicating the direction that the uh, frame relay packets have been sent so the 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 FEC and the FECN bit this is part of the address field that's in the frame relay header the FACN bit is um, initiated when the DTE device sends frame relay frames into the network when the network is congested. The DCE end here is responsible for setting the FECN bits in the frame relay packet. So normally um, the FECN bit is basically indicating that the frame has experienced congestion in the path from the source to the destination. Now the BECN bit your backward explicit congestion notification this is a part of the uh, again part of the address field that's in the frame relay header the DCE devices set the value of the Beckham bit to 1 when the frames are traveling in the opposite direction of the frames when they've got the Beckham bit set so when it's traveling in the opposite direction from the destination back to the source and there's congestion then you get the backwards explicit congestion notification bit set because the other term just to be familiar with is NBMA non-broadcast multiple access so normally when on your network if we have various PCs connected to a hub or a switch now if your Ethernet is known as a broadcast if a broadcast is sent out from one PC, all of the devices on the network will see that broadcast. Well, the whole point of the non-broadcast the non network, frame relay, is that a packet is sent from one device to the next device. So what happens in this particular instance is broadcast packets and multicasts. can't be directly sent out to all devices on our network so this is going to lead to specific problems when we're configuring protocols that use multicast such as OSPF you shouldn't really need to worry about um, specifics of configuring protocols over the frame relay in CCNA they tend, you want, they tend to want to under, you to understand how IP addressing works um, issues with possibly with split split horizon but actually configuring OSPF and other protocols over frame relay is moving more into the CCMP sort of syllabus okay so we've talked about Fekin and Beck admits and we've also talked about non broadcast multiple access if we go back to our initial slide so what is frame relay we've talked to generally frame relay terminologies 